right, so we're back again, this time with Lloyd. As you can see, I moved down to Florida for a brief time. I have come down here uh, for a memorial service. And as I was driving down, I got, well, I didn't get COVID, but I started manifesting COVID. So I am now in full-blown COVID. Don't worry, any of you, none of you are going to get it. This is all electronic. You're thousands of miles away. Even Lloyd, who's right here, seemingly next to me, he's thousands of miles away in Europe. But what we want to do, and one of the things that has been interesting, we're now going into our ninth episode, our, our ninth video on Sharia law. And we've been looking at the comments. And Lloyd, it's been interesting. You've noted this, that most of the Muslims just are not responding with any cogent response. If you're going to confront Lloyd, <clears throat> with what he's putting up there. Remember, he's referring and he's sourcing everything he says. For heaven's sakes, Muslims, if you disagree with Lloyd, please source in kind. Give back some material or show where in fic the sources that support what you're saying. Don't just yell and call him names and say you don't know what you're talking about. That's fine. But you need to say what is it that he's got wrong. Prove that he is not either reading it correctly or interpreting it correctly but use pick use one of the sharia schools use one of the mujtahids the four major mujtahids to support what you're saying don't just sell sit there and yell and scream and holler again against him that's easy anybody can yell scream and holler but have you noticed none of the muslims are sourcing what they say it's their own viewpoint it's abdul's viewpoint he doesn't like what he hears and so he yells and screams and you don't know what you're talking about because you're not a muslim but did you notice and let me say this everything that lloyd has been supporting everything that he has been saying he sources in either one of the four schools of law and he specifically sources it from the reliance of the traveler that's why i've asked him to come on board because he is an expert in this field and he would not dare just come up and give up his opinion. What good does that do? That's not helping you or me or anybody else. It certainly doesn't help him. So please, Muslims, if you're going to confront what Lloyd is saying, support what you're saying. Show us in the reliance of the travel. Use one of the other manuals, but come back with some type of material that gives you support. Now, we do want to go, and one of the things I want to have asked Lloyd to do this time is to give us the reason for Islam. What is the purpose of Islam? Over to you, Lloyd. Right. Thank you, Jay, for having me on. Very good to be back. And I wish you a speedy recovery for you and your family. And yeah, so on this point, as you've noted, Muslims have not been providing fiqh sources. We have a great commission within Christian belief that we have to go forth and spread the good news. And if you can just uh, remind the audience a little bit more about that, well, what our commission is so that we can make a contrast. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the Bible. Uh, it's in uh, let's see, Matthew 28, uh, starting verse 19 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then on in Acts 1, 8, it then gives it and it enlarges upon that where it then says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Those are the two verses we always use, Matthew 28, 19 and 20, and then also Acts 1, 8. And that's why we go. And we have for the last 2000 years, starting in Jerusalem, going to Judea, Samaria, to the entire world. And we are doing that today. That is something that I'm a part of. That's something that you're a part of, Lloyd. Uh, anybody who is a Christian should be a part of the Great Commission. Right. Yes. Now, Islam has a fundamental doctrine. The, the fundamental doctrine of Islam is called commanding the right and forbidding the wrong. To command the right is to impose the Sharia. To forbid the wrong is to prohibit, to prevent anything which would violate the Sharia. Thus, Sharia is also something imposed upon non-Muslims. It is binding upon non-Muslims as much as Muslims. Now I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to briefly show this to explain some of the behavior that we are witnessing at the moment in response to what I am doing. So let me go sh to my share screen and right. So the fundamental doctrine of Islam, if we see here, is notice Q, commanding the right and forbidding the wrong. That 
is in this book, which is, this is the most highly certified Islamic law text in the world. It is certified by numerous Islamic bodies, including Al-Azhar. It has their formal stamp of approval as being in completely in alignment with Orthodox Sunni Islamic doctrine. So I'm going to go to this page here. So let's have a look. This book Q, Commanding the Right and Forbidding the Wrong. As you can see here, this is the fundamental doctrine of Islam. And I want to show you what this entails in terms of its ruling, what Muslims are required to do. The book that this, is coming, of, of, the book that this is coming out of is Reliance of the Travelers, is what you're saying. Correct. This is Reliance of the Traveler. Yeah. And now notice it states here, degrees of severity, right? In terms of commanding the right and forbidding the wrong. First, explain that something is wrong. So a Muslim has to explain to a non-Muslim or a Muslim that something is wrong. Then they must forbid the act verbally. Then they need to censure the act with harsh words. Now, harsh words, in this case, we can define as verbal abuse. This is a series of steps that they will follow or tend to follow when forbidding the wrong or commanding the right. Notice the next one, Q5.6. It says, writing the wrong by hand. Now, I'm not going to go into great depth, but you can think for yourself what writing the wrong by hand may be. Then, Jay, if you can just read the last three for us, the last three steps within commanding the right. Intimidation, assault, force of arms. Wow. Yes, and notice that writing the wrong by hand comes before intimidation. Right? So... This is commanding the right. And do understand, they do not have to go through this in sequence. They can go from step one to step seven like that. This is not, this is a recommended order. This is not an obligatory order. They can go straight from bottom to top immediately. So understand we're dealing with now, censuring with harsh words is required. This entails including verbal abuse. I just wanted to mention that. Now, this is their great commissioning. We are great commissioning is just go into the world preaching and baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's our commission. Nothing about assault or force of arms or intimidation. Look at the contrast here, folks. And do you see what he's doing? He's saying this is their commission versus our commission. What a contrast in commission. Go ahead. Yeah, um, we'll go into depth into this another time, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what we will be discussing in the future. And hopefully Muslims will take the time to read this and understand a bit more about their law, as well as non-Muslims and Christians will read this and understand. Now, we spoke about recently that the when you insult Muhammad, right? And insulting Muhammad is defined as not believing that Muhammad is totally perfect, right? What happens is this is considered slander in Islam, and I will cover those laws at another time. However, understand while it is illegal for you to slander Islam by, by claiming that Islam is not perfect or by claiming that Muhammad is not perfect, Islam does allow slander. They have a topic called permissible slander, the laws of permissible slander. It is legal for Muslims, according to Islamic law, to slander you. You see, slander is permissible for a lawful purpose if there is an aim countenanced by the sacred law, the Sharia. So they're allowed to slander you, you're not allowed to slander them. They have six rules which define their slandering that they may perform. All right, so this aside, we are now talking about the purposes of Islam. And for that reason, Jay, I just want to show the listeners, show the audience, a little bit about the Arab culture that some of these laws derive from. Now, of course, these laws are derived from Jewish law. They've taken things from Greek law. They've taken things from all over the place, but a little bit from the, the pagan law, which hopefully allows people to understand the culture. Now, this is a common Bedouin saying that we see here. Uh, my screen is shared and you can see it. All right. This saying, I am against my brother. My brother and I are against my cousin. My cousin and I are against the stranger. This is a typical saying within the Arab culture. It is sometimes quoted as, I and my brother are against my cousin. I and my cousin are against the stranger. This is a completely different culture. It's a completely different worldview than what we are used to within our Western Christian worldview, within our European worldview as we've, as we've developed it. Now, this, this saying... 
if this is known as the concentric sorry? circle paradigm. I don't know if you're familiar with this, where you have a small circle. No. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Go on, please. Yeah. We we we. I mean, I've heard this many times before, and it's it, they call it the concentric circle. So you start with I and my brother against our father. I and my brother, our father against the the community. I and our our brother, my father, and the community against the next town. And they call it the the concentric circle paradigm of, uh, and it's well known within uh, Middle Eastern pri uh, cultures that that we don't understand it, but anybody from the Middle Eastern environment would understand what we say. Correct. Within Europe, within America, within European culture, Western culture, we have cooperative cultures. These are not cooperative cultures. There's a different standard of trust. There's a standard of enforcement rather than trust, which is why you have this turning to violence within the doctrine of commanding the right. Now, this saying signifies a hierarchy of loyalties based on the proximity of some person to oneself. We are not Muslims. We are outside of that circle. So this circle begins with yourself, then it proceeds through, through the nuclear family as defined by male kinship, and this has been adopted into Islam, of course, and then in principle, at least, to a genetic or linguistic group, which is perceived as kinship in the Middle East and North Africa. So understand, we are, it's them versus us. It's a very strong us versus them paradigm. I want to show you how this idea has now been taken into the Sharia, right? Now, this is a brief discussion on harming the friends, the awliya of Allah, the Muslim is the brother of the Muslim. So this idea has now been extended into Islamic law, into the concept that the Muslim is the brother of the Muslim. He does not oppress him. He does not hang back from coming to his aid or belittle him. It is sufficiently wicked for someone to demean his fellow Muslim. So what demeans the Muslims must be responded to. And we are on the other side of that, outside of that concentric circle. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an insight. Do you have any comment on this, Jay, before I wrap this up? No, and this is a, this is this is important. I, and in our wrap up, I'd like to just kind of refer back to this. Sure, please. Yeah, this is. I think this is going to help an awful lot of your viewers understand what we're doing, what we're dealing with here. We in the West do not have this idea of. We do in some ways. Bl uh, blood is thicker than water. We say that blood is thicker than water. That's. The, probably the closest we get to that, that you are always with your family, you are always going to stand by, a mother will always uh, stand by her son, you know, that famous saying, oh, look, everybody's out of step, but my Johnny boy, that's a typical mother's love for her son, a brother's love for each other and the family. But that's as far as that goes, what you're saying here, it goes way beyond that. And you have these different cons hierarchies of loyalties, what you're talking about that have been adopted by Islam, that's why we don't understand all the time how that Muslims will defend even the indefensible, even things that mm -hmm. happen in the news, they will still have to defend it just because they are other Muslims. And if Correct. another, if a Muslim were ever to go against what another Muslim is doing, even in public, there will, they will be seen as traitors within their own community. Correct. Whereas we would be the first to say that we won't have anything to do with. They don't represent us. They, you know, they do not represent my belief or my uh, set of morals. Whereas Muslims will defend the most indefensible primarily because in some ways they are, they have to, they are, they're, it's by default. And I think in some ways, I, the way I was, see if this is right, Lloyd, correct me if I'm wrong. I've always been told that Islam looks at the world uh, in two categories. There, there is what they call Dar al-Islam, which is the house of Islam, versus Dar al-Harb. Dar al-Harb means house of war. And anytime a Muslim leaves Dar al-Islam, so if they leave their house or the community or their country and go to another country, say come to the West, they are now entering into Dar al-Harb. And in Dar al-Harb, House of War, you use it as the context of war, which means you must defend your house regardless of what comes up or what they do, because you're in the House of War. That we That's don't right. understand as Westerners. And this is why sometimes we are so confused by the reactions of Muslim politicians, Muslim families, Muslim friends, when they hear what's happening on the news and their reaction to it. And we just were befuddled by it. But now this makes sense. This makes sense, what you're saying. They have no right. recourse but to defend it, but to support it. 
and certainly in public to give lip service to it. Correct. So, yeah, so obviously there's more to be said and more to be investigated. People want to download the sources, read into them and look for other sources that further expand upon this. And now I can wrap up and just finish with the explicit view of what is Islam's purpose? It's two purposes. All right, Jay, so I want to now just introduce two critical Quran verses, which have then become doctrine, which have then become law. So we go from verses to doctrine to law. And this is Islam's two purposes, as you can see. There are two critical verses. The one is Quran 4, 157. This is Islam's religious purpose. They said in boast, we killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, but they killed him not, nor crucified him. But so it was made to appear to them. Of a surety, they killed him not. So understand that Islam rejects and it seeks to correct the gospel. It seeks to correct the crucifixion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus to nullify those events, to deny those events. And you must understand Islam seeks to replace Jesus with Muhammad. Then Islam has a political purpose. Uh, it should be said, and I will be covering this, Islam in its own sources does not anywhere define itself as a religion. We do that and they are happy with that because in Islamic law, there's a doctrine of lying within Islam. Islam has a doctrine of lying and lying is not only permissible, it is obligatory, but confusion can serve the benefit of Islam according to the Islamic doctrine of lying. So, but Islam defines itself as a political system. So in Quran 3104, there's a handful of these verses, but we'll pick one of them. Quran 3104, Islam's political purpose, commanding the right, forbidding the wrong. Let there arise out of you a group of people inviting to all that is good, enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong. So commanding the right and forbidding the wrong is the fundamental doctrine of Islam. It guides the Ummah's socio-political behavior and agenda. And if you're not a Muslim, understand Sharia is binding upon non-Muslims. I'll end here for now. We will cover this further in the future. Uh, over to you, Jay. Right. Okay. So th these really are the categories that you want to talk about. I, you brought in a number of things. You've got one of the, th I mean, this is why we're going to have to unpack each one of these as a separate standalone video. I can see that. When you talk about the purposes of Islam, this idea of commanding the right, forbidding the wrong is the political purposes, but also correcting and replacing Christianity is a secondary criteria that is needed. Now, to do that, you, you then went into some of the sequences of how this is going to be done. And the, the six sequences you went through, man, that, was, that blew my mind right there because I had not heard that before. And I would like you to come back and actually unpack that much more in depth for us. We need to know what you mean by simply explaining, then going to forbidding, because that's how it's done. Censoring, more men then going into actually writing, writing things out intimidating, assaulting, and force of arms. No, writing means writing by hand. In other words, I know using that. your hand. -I -T -I -N -G. Writing. That's writing, yeah, which writing which you figure out. You, you figure it out. Oh, I'm seeing. You're saying it's not writing things down. You're saying writing with by hand means slapping and... and, and to, write, to write an error, to write a wrong. How do you write the wrong? Well, you use your hand. Okay, I Intent. thought it was W-R-I-T-I-N-G. You write no, in, no. in newspapers, things like that. No. The written word. No. If we go into the doctrine of commanding the right, forbidding the wrong, you will learn that, first of all, the greatest, the greatest reward is received by someone who writes the wrong by hand. The next, if you cannot do that, if you cannot perform this writing action with your hand, is to do so with your tongue, with your mouth, with your pen. And if you cannot do that, if you cannot do it verbally, you then hate that person and hate the action in your heart. And that is the weakest degree of faith. So the strongest degree of faith is when you worship Allah by writing the wrong with your hand. And okay, you so can think to yourself. That. Listen, we'll have to do a lot more on this because I can see there's an awful lot you can pull out of that because then from that it moves into intimidation, which is a verbal it could be in many different ways of intimidation and then assault well assault to me suggests physical and that yes. is really backed up by the next one which is force of arms you can't get any yes. more physical than actually using and killing uh weapons in this case uh, but i yes. thought it was fascinating how you then looked at the categories of who is it you do this against 
Uh, one is that you start with that very famous quote that many people know, me and my brother against our father, me and my brother and our father against the, uh, the, 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 the group, or you might say the, the town, our town against the next town. And each concentric circle of loyalty, get, loyalty gets larger and larger and larger. But it always comes back to that first one that first one about me and my brother against everybody else. And that is something that is endemic to the Muslim mindset. We've seen it over and over again. You've had experiences, I've had personal experiences where this has come out. These are things that we need to know about. And so thank you for doing that because what you're doing, Lloyd, you're not just saying this off the top of your head. You're pinpointing it in the text. You're using text to back up what you're saying. Now, people are not going to like what Lloyd has been saying. They're, they're, you're, listen, you're going to disagree with them. We expect you to disagree with them, especially you Muslims. If you really do disagree with them, and you will, then please come back with us with further evidence. Don't just give us your opinion. Don't just give us what you want to say, because that's what we expect you to do. You're in Dal al Harb. You're in House of War. You're in the West. You're on YouTube. We expect you to lie and deceive and use all kinds of words to shut down what is the harm against us. Because you know that this is what you're called to do. All right, we've now exposed you. The only way we're going to listen to you is to come back with against Lloyd using text. It has to be text from Reliance of the Traveler or use one of the other manuals for other the other four schools of fiqh. Unless you're going to use support like that, evidence from that, it's nothing more than your opinion. And we know what your opinion is about. It is colored by the fact that you have to do this by the definition of who you are. <laughs> so in some ways, this is a catch-all comeback for all the Muslims who are going to sit there and try to default what you're doing. Lord, you've also, you've, in some ways, you've protected from here on out what you're going to be doing in the future, because everything you are going to support, everything you are going to talk about, sorry, you're going to support with evidence. And it's evidential material that we are interested in. We're not interested in people's opinion. I'm not interested in people's experience. I don't want care dilly spot of what you think. I want to know what your scripture says, what your traditions say, and most importantly, what your mujtahids say. If you can give quote from your mujtahids, we will then listen to you. You got it? So do that in the comments below. God bless you. Thanks so much, Lloyd. This has been not only very eye-opening uh, and revealing, this has been very helpful because you're also creating a protection for these discussions for the future from here on out. This is Jay and Lloyd, about 6,000 miles apart, over and out. God bless.